Hi, my name is Jamie Knukin, and I'm an IBD specialist at the University of Michigan. And welcome to the IBD School 800 series. If you haven't yet, please check out our first video, IBD School 801, for information about fertility in IBD. In this video, IBD School 802, we will go beyond pregnancy and talk about breastfeeding in inflammatory bowel disease. If you would like to start breastfeeding your child, it is important to discuss breastfeeding with your obstetrician and gastroenterologist, as there are some IBD medications that can affect breastfeeding. You and your provider should weigh the risks and the benefits of breastfeeding with your current medications that are used to control your inflammatory bowel disease. More than 80% of women with IBD who have children do choose to breastfeed, and more than half of them are able to breastfeed for more than six months. Medications like sulfasalazine and 5-amino salicylates, these include azacol, lialda, aprizo, colazol, and delzacol, are released in the colon and are considered safe during lactation. Immunomodulator therapies like 6-mercaptopurine or 6-MP and azathioprine are found in very low levels in breast milk, far below immunosuppressant doses. Some providers may recommend waiting four hours after taking your azathioprine or 6-MP to breastfeed to minimize exposure of this medication to your baby. Steroids are considered safe for breastfeeding, though many women wait for up to four hours after their dose to make sure that the amount of steroids in the breast milk is as low as possible before they have a feeding. Tests of breast milk in nursing mothers on anti-TNF therapies like Remicade, Humira, Simzia, and Symphony show very tiny amounts of drug in the breast milk, about one two hundredth of the concentration in the mother's blood, which should not affect your baby. However, there are three medications that are believed to pass through the breast milk and can affect the baby, and it is recommended that these are not used during breastfeeding. These include methotrexate, cyclosporin, and tacrolimus. There have been several small studies that have confirmed that most IBD medications are completely safe for breastfeeding. However, these data are limited and do not exclude all risk. Of course, you should always discuss the risks and benefits of your IBD medications and breastfeeding with your healthcare provider. The most important thing to remember is that in order to maintain a stable remission of your IBD, you likely require some form of medical therapy. In a study done in Canada, 68% of women who stopped their IBD medical therapy in order to breastfeed had a flare within the next year. You need to discuss the risks and benefits of deciding to breastfeed with your healthcare provider prior to stopping any of your medical therapy because your health as a parent should be your first priority, especially if you are breastfeeding. I'm Jamie Knukin and thank you for watching IBD School.